It was mentioned by Undersecretary Nelson, the counter ransomware initiative. And last fall, I was honored to represent the ransomware task force at the International Counter Ransomware Initiative, along with uh, Michael Daniel and a number of the uh, a number of the uh, coalition's members uh, at its second summit at the White House. Um, the summit brought together, as I think most of you know, representatives of the of the initiative, which is 36 countries in the uh, European Union, together with civil society and the private sector. While I was there, I was pleased to highlight the priority recommendations of the task force, the work that we published last fall, including the blueprint for ransomware defense, as well as the cyber incident reporting framework. I also commended the members of the ransomware task force for their actions to date and their ongoing commitment to addressing ransomware. So please join me in welcoming Deputy National Security Advisor Ann Newberger for an update on the counter ransomware initiative. Good afternoon. It's so nice to look around the room and see so many colleagues and friends who have worked in the area of cybersecurity for so long. So it's really terrific to be here. And as I mentioned, when I walked in, um, I really feel like instead of saying thank you that I'm here, I'm here because of the work IST does and because I'm so grateful for the insights and advice and just great ideas that have come out of IST. You've met with me and my team at the National Security Council many times as we've worked to kind of catalyze US government's unified approach to countering ransomware. And I'm very, very grateful for the work and congratulations on all that's been accomplished. So ransomware attacks have major national security impact. Coming into my job, I truly expected that nation state cyber attacks would be the core driver of both domestic and international cyber policy. And I can say that instead, criminal ransomware activity has really been a core driver. When I think about what's driven our domestic cyber policy forward, certainly the colonial cyber attack, catalyzed action, highlighted the level of resilience improvements needed, highlighted the need for us to have a way to counter the illicit movement of crypto that drives the escalating ransomware activity, highlighted the need for us to work with international partners on what is foundationally a transnational threat. Infrastructure can be in one set of countries, actors in another set of countries, or typically they're usually in one, and then attacking um, a set of networks in another set, right? So that's a fun, that's a transnational problem that takes transnational cooperation. In the period from 2020 to 2022, there were 6,516 ransomware attacks around the world. In that same period, there were 438 attacks against hospital or healthcare in the US and 244 attacks against schools. Think about those numbers. And those go beyond stealing data, which is of course often a concern. They're disrupting critical services in the US and around the world, services that our citizens rely on, services that our government is committed to ensuring our citizens can rely on. So again, a thank you for everybody who's here who takes fighting ransomware seriously and has committed time and effort and knowledge to that fight. We've made solid progress against ransomware in the last couple of years. The recent Hive takedown is a superb example, but there's so much more that we need to do. So today I will give you an update on the Biden administration's efforts to counter ransomware in our main effort, the International Counter Ransomware Initiative, which brings a whole of government approach from the US and works to catalyze and drive the same with what is now 40 international partners around the world, what's been done and what we're doing now and aiming to accomplish in the run up to the third International Counter Ransomware Initiative, which we'll host here in October. So to give you a sense of the buy-in and support around the world for countering ransomware, when we launched the initiative, there were 32 countries involved. Last year in October, 2022, when we had the second international initiative, we had 36 countries plus the European Union. And just since then till now, there are three new countries who have joined, Jordan, Costa Rica, and Colombia. And what's really terrific about hearing that is, the breadth of the partnership, from Nigeria, which leads, co-leads the diplomacy panel with Germany, to Singapore, to Lithuania, which co-leads the resilience efforts with India, to, of course, 
the countries I just mentioned, who have now joined and who have a mentor country guiding them. It's also building international partnership in a key way, building ties. Because when we talk about potentially countering Chinese militia cyber activity, there are some countries who will say, we don't want to do that publicly and together. When we talk about countering Russian nation state activity, there are some countries who may have concerns about doing so. When we talk about countering cyber crime, we can build the kind of international cyber coalition to take on and drive that operationalization of working disruption together, ensuring that crypto entities or banks put in place know your customer entities. Our diplomacy, we can truly build that unified international global cyber coalition, which we all know is foundational to making cyberspace secure and safe um, for the world. So as I mentioned, we're at the two-year mark of the Ransomware Task Force, soon approaching the third summit in October. So it's a great time to reflect on what's worked. Quite candidly, what we've learned doesn't work, which is just as important, and to focus on the outcomes of our global disruption effort. And the conversations IST has put together today are really at the heart of some of the most difficult ongoing policy discussions that we're grappling with in the Counter Ransomware Initiative and within the administration and with discussions with our international partners. And I'll highlight three really difficult policy areas that we're currently grappling with. First, measuring the impact of our disruption efforts. On the heels of the Hive and the Genesis takedowns, we want to ask ourselves, we know it has a disruptive impact. For how long? How do we extend how long that lasts? How do we ensure these disruptions have foundational impact on the infrastructure, on the people, on the money laundering networks that make this possible and that drive it? Second, crypto. We know the core role illicit use of crypto plays in ransomware. It's all about the money. We've worked hard around the world to drive, know your customer, to drive designations of mixers. The tornado.cash designation was a good example of that because mixers often serve as the money laundering network for crypto. But there's so much more to do. We still see crypto exchanges who won't work to address these issues. We still know there's many other countries. So how do we drive what we need to, to apply the lessons we've learned from fiat currency to find and block money laundering to the world of crypto? We've made significant progress. Again, I highlight the designations. I highlight the engagement of the Department of Treasury. And I know Brian was just here in working around the world to implement Know Your Customer rules. I highlight um, the work in the Financial Action Task Force, but we know more is needed. And finally, a question that we've grappled with both within the US government and bilaterally as well as multilaterally now in the counter ransomware initiative. And that is, do we ban ransomware with a waiver? Fundamentally, money drives ransomware. And for an individual entity, it may be that they make a decision to pay. But for the larger problem of ransomware, that is the wrong decision. Now, there may be an individual entity, a major hospital, an emergency services, that we just are committed to bringing their services back up as quickly as possible. So when we think about banning ransom payments, we ask, we would do so with a waiver, e.g. notifying, asking the permission of the relative US government. It's a difficult question. It's one we've grappled with. But with all the work that we've done together over the last two years on disruption, on resilience, the fact that we still look today at the Dallas Police Department suffering a ransomware attack, and we know, of course, that is an, an entity um, that's a, it's a, an important entity for critical services in this country, we have to ask ourselves, would that be helpful more broadly? Companies and others didn't make ransom payments. So that's a, a question that I know you know, IST grapples with as well, and it's certainly a very hard one. So as I mentioned, these are, these are issues we're both working through in our own policy processes, as well as through the international CRI. And specifically on the crypto piece, I want to highlight the co-leadership of the UK and Singapore who lead that panel of work within the counter ransomware initiative. It's a particularly cool part of the initiative in that while the US catalyzed it and built it, countries stepped up to lead each of the core lines of work. And to make sure that I covered each one and gave a shout out to all, I'll just repeat. So resilience is co-led by India and Lithuania, a very large country and a small one. And we try to do that bridging because countries have different amounts of capacity and resources to apply to the problem set. 
I mentioned countering illicit use of crypto by the UK and Singapore, clearly global banking titans, who we felt also brought capacity building skills to help the smaller countries learn that. Disruption, led by Australia, which has had a very difficult year and is very committed to, to those disruption efforts. Diplomacy, led by Germany and Nigeria. Again, Nigeria began to co-lead with the goal of bringing in the global south, which is suffering from cybercrime and may lack capacity and resources, and we certainly wanted to bring that voice into our work. And indeed, as I mentioned, the membership ranges from Honduras to Estonia to India to represent kind of what global countries face. So I'll step back for a moment and just give some quick background on the coalition itself and what we focused on in the first two summits. The first two summits were focused first on a shared understanding of the threat picture. It was a slide that our Director of National Intelligence put up summarizing the thousands of attacks happening around the world, which regions, which sectors, who the actors are, to kind of level set knowledge by all countries around the world. And then the second was building that effective coalition base, learning how we bring countries together and operationally how they have regular calls, how they drive work together. Now, in this third year, we're focused on first expanding the tent doing exercises. India and Lithuania each conducted an exercise in their region, recognizing the differences in time zones so that countries could learn from each other. How do you detect an attack? How do you rapidly respond? How do you communicate to your public who may be concerned about critical services? And they were able to learn from each other. And as I said, foundationally building the muscle of that global cyber coalition that we seek. The second thing we've done since the coalition meeting in October was launching the International Counter Ransomware Task Force led by Australia, which seeks to build links, building on the work that's done by our Department of Justice to disrupt operations together worldwide. That now includes Interpol. Interpol asked to join and is a valuable, valuable partner. And their work is operationalizing the policy. So for example, the Department of Justice gave a brief on their hive takedown, talking about how they built the international cooperation and helping build that capacity among other members to drive disruption. And the third key effort launched since October is enabling more countries to take leadership roles, such as the UAE and Israel, who partner on an information sharing initiative. And as I mentioned, we look forward to hosting the next summit in October and bringing that work to the broader effort. Just last month, the International Counter Ransomware Task Force had its launch in Belfast, and they focused on integrating the private sector systematically and concretely into this work. As folks know, at the last summit in October, the private sector fully participated. And we talked about now how to make that actually a part of the muscle of the work. And certainly, when we think about the work that's been done for disruption, the work that Microsoft targeting unlicensed copies of Cobalt Strike is just one example of what the private sector can bring. And as last October, we expect the ransomware task force to be there and fully participating. So before I close, I want to highlight and give thanks for a number of key disruption efforts that have happened in the last six months that really represent the community stepping up and saying, we now really need to tackle from a disruption perspective. First, last November, the FBI arrested one of the top global cyber fugitives, Vyashlov Penchikov, more affectionately known as Tank, in Geneva. In January, with the takedown of Hive's servers and infrastructure, the FBI and global partners made significant progress in dismantling the ransomware as a service ecosystem. And in January, as you know, Treasury and the FBI partnered with a number of European partners to take a host of actions against a cryptocurrency exchange, Bislato, and its operators, including issuing the first order pursuant to the Combating Russian Money Laundering Act. And just last month, as I mentioned, Microsoft's Digital Crimes Unit and partner firms led an effort to disrupt Cobalt Strike through seizing domains related to criminal activity. These approaches working together show what's possible. And that's why I'm so excited to be here. And I look forward to hearing the input from the IST community as we seek to eliminate ransomware together. Thank you.